It's a good thing everyone's prepared with questions. So. It's Jane again. I have a question. Um, can you go through the React flow from on change through um, through a input handler and um, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a great. That's a great question. Um, it's a great thing to review because it takes you from process flow uh, beginning to end. Um, so let me do that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a Mern application that's integrated. Uh, into an express application. So um, is it okay if I start off there? Yes, that's great. Okay. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is if I have a express application or a server side application, um, the server is going to be hit first, right? Um, and you have all of these different things being set up. Uh, this is all stuff that we've done before. Um, the only difference is if we're using uh, production, the uh, express.static, meaning that any sta uh, static builds are gonna come from client slash build. Um, and that's created every time you, um, you use yarn build, which is essentially just going through Webpack and saying like, okay, create all the files that are gonna be used uh, for production. Um, so this is a production purpose. Uh, part over here, right? Only used in production. Um, so again, that just means that all of your static handling will be done by um, uh, within client slash build. So this is generated from um, your Webpack. All right, uh, from there we have our API routes. Um, so this is all our express routing, right? Um, so this is gonna get hit first. Um, and so if anything ends in slash API, uh, it's going to go through this route. Otherwise, um, anytime there's a uh, get to anything else that's not specifically in API, it's going to go directly back to our index.html file and our build. So it's going to go to this file, which is minified right now. Um, because that is the production ready uh, build. But essentially that just means, hey, um, I want routing to be done through my React app. So this is gonna send the index.html file. Now the index.html file, don't forget that that includes your uh, bundle JS and that's taken care of uh, for you through crap or create React app. All right, so this index.html file is actually what's loading the React as well. And of course, we start listing on our app. So we have our Express application running. So if I run this, uh, let me see. I probably already have it running. But let me just close some stuff. Yeah, OK. I'm going to hit yarn start. Oh, let's see. Oh, I know why, because uh, I removed everything. So make sure that uh, you have everything installed. And then again, we have to go into client. I think that's already installed, but let's just run it just in case. Okay, cool. So now if I do yarn start. Um, and if I go to my package JSON, my yarn start is actually fairly complicated. So if I go to it, um, it's saying if it's production, uh, then run start uh, production. Um, if it's uh, development environment. So if it's not production, then run start dev. So this is actually some shell scripting over here. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Essentially, all it's doing is when you deploy your application, the first thing that um, Heroku does or most um, server-side applications are going to do is look for the start. And that's what they're going to execute. 
So if you know that your environment production is, um, sorry, if they know that you have your environment in production, uh, then it's gonna uh, execute this, which will then just execute node server.js. Uh, if I'm doing it in development environment, I actually want to run um, both uh, Nodemon, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ignore the client. So um, anything in the client build, uh, Nodemon's gonna ignore, but um, NPM is gonna run the client. Um, is this, thing, is this done when we do yarn build or is this something that we put in ourselves? This is something you put in yourselves. Okay. So this is something that's a little bit more complicated. So this is then going to NPM run client, which is then going to CD into client for you and NPM run start that. Um, and so when you run start in NPM client, um, it's just going to start react scripts. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff that's happening here. Uh, but what you want to think about is essentially, this is starting up both um, your server on Express and uh, React scripts. Okay. So that's what's happening. So this is when the server went on 3001 and um, the React went on 3000 that we did on Saturday. Yes, yes. And then um, it's going to proxy all requests um, to 3001. That means whenever it makes an API request, it's not going to go back to the app itself. It's going to go to uh, the development server. With, oh, sorry, the um, Express server. Okay. And that's what the proxy does. So it's a little bit, it's, I mean, it's fairly complicated, but... Um, that's another reason I don't like really using yarn or sorry, um, crap is because some of the scripting is a little weird. Um, when I run it like a custom build then I know exactly what I'm doing here and it lets me like do whatever I want. Um, but it's not too bad. You can essentially copy and paste this stuff. And that way you don't have to really worry about too much. Um, just make sure you guys understand. Also, I think there's some echo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, I think I'm, Muting it and unmuting it, and I think that's causing the echo. Oh, got that it. Okay. okay. Omar, while we're on the subject, uh, just to clarify, um, so you did the yarn start, uh, I mean, yarn install uh, in both places, right? Then you right. see into the client, and then you did the yarn start inside of the client, and that means that it will run the server as well? So there's a couple of things. So you have technically two servers running. Um, one is the Webpack server, which is a hot loading development server that's running through uh, React scripts. So if I'm running this over here, this is actually running um, a server on the client side. Um, and that's just like for hot loading. Remember like as soon as I save, it automatically updates. Yeah, so that means that it's on a client side server. Yeah. And then there is a um, express server that's running at, on a different port. That's running on 3001. And that's this one right here. But did you have to uh, like do node server JS or when you did the yarn start that automatically fired up? So yarn start executes a bunch of other stuff. So if I'm on production, it will run npm start production, which is right here. If I'm not on production, so right now non-production, then it'll go npm start dev, which goes here. So this will run Nodemon. It'll ignore running Nodemon on uh, anything in client. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna execute npm run client, which is over here. And it's gonna CD into this, and then it's gonna npm run start inside of here. So npm run start inside of here is React script start. So essentially, it's just chaining. So take a look at that for a little bit. It's a little bit complicated, but. Uh, should, should we all have our uh, package JSON set up this way? Is this like the most ultimate way? It's not the most ultimate way. It's just one way of doing it. I actually don't have it done this way. I have it done a little bit differently. I, again, I don't use 
create React app as much. I use uh, my own thing. Um, so if you want to use this, you can use it. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. Let's just take a look at it for a little bit. Let me make it a bit smaller. There we go. All right. Was well, that enough time to kind of go through it and see what's happening? Uh, yes. Can we have this uh, package JSON, uh, or do we already have it? You guys already have it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So this is in the latest. Uh, what's it called? React practice. I sent that out. Um. So you guys should all have this. So again, I did a little custom thing where I, I put everything in one place. All right, so why don't we start working with um, the next step? So, hmm? No, sorry, it just squeaked because I put, I unmuted it, sorry. Oh, gotcha, no worries. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the next part. So uh, if I have, server.js, then again, unless I'm making a call to an API, uh, I'm going to return back the index.html. So that's going to go to client build index.html. And that's this file over here. And again, that's going to load uh, all the other stuff. Now, this is kind of going to get ignored if um, we're using this in development. So if we're running in development, it's actually going to go to this file over here. Uh, sorry, not this file. Uh, where is it? It should go to public and it should go to this index.html file. Um, so this should be running um, because essentially Webpack takes care of this. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what happens with the create React app. It's always kind of weird because it does its own thing. Um, but essentially, you're just trying to uh, run everything um, from source as opposed to having everything um, pre built. Um, so I have all my components running from here. Uh, basically, everything's going to be running from source anyway. So if I have my index.js, uh, this is going to be what um, mounts my component. Um, so I have my component mounted uh, from app to uh, the root. So that's going to go to my index.html file. From there, I go into my app.js. So my app.js right now um, is actually my router file. So what I'm going to, yeah, I'll just keep this as app.js. I could have just changed this to like router, main router. I usually change it to main router. And that, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that right now. Main router. Change this to main router. Yeah. Okay. All right, and that makes sense because this is actually more of a router file than anything else. I also want to eventually um, modularize this groceries file, but let's get to this for now. All right, so our router file uh, is going to contain essentially our main 
um, I would say container. Um, container does have a specific meaning, but I would say it's like our main application that gets mounted. So I'll use that for like right now. Uh, I've imported a ton of components in this one. <clears throat> Generally, I don't like to import components that I'm not going to use. Um, but in this case, this is fairly okay. So what's happening is I'm importing all of these different components. And generally when I'm importing a bunch of components, they're going to be containers that I'm going to be importing. Meaning that they're top level components, which means that they are generally uh, class components. They're not like dumb components. <sighs> okay. <laughs> In this case, um, What's kind of counterintuitive is I'm actually not keeping state in my main component, which is kind of weird um, because you think it's like, oh, it's the topmost component. Of course, it's going to have tons of state. But it's actually just a component that's going to render other components. So um, it's just going to say, here, I am just going to route to all of these. So you can think of this component as a dumb component that is just responsible for routing to different paths. So um, if I have all of these different components that I've imported, uh, and again, this isn't really how I'd structure an application if I'm using router, but it, you, you can though, this is, this is okay to do. Um, it, it can get a little bit more complicated, but this is, this is fine if you have a, a basic application. Um, so what I do is I can say, you know, uh, what are my paths? Uh, and at, to each of these paths, I can now have a view or essentially a component being rendered. So if I go to the root path, um, this route is going to uh, render the component for home, which it does over here. If I go to the blog over here, it'll render this. Now, um, this occurs with everything that we do. So if we went into recipe as well, we can go into more complicated components. Or it actually gets things from other places. So if I go and type in, I don't know, um, cheesecake, it's actually uh, contacting the API. The API is uh, getting data back and then React is displaying that information through another component. Um, so these are not split up into different paths, just like you would in a regular web, web application where you have all these different pages, except instead of pages, um, you dynamically render components based off of um, the path given to you. Similar to how you do routing on the server side uh, using handlebars. Um, so it's a very similar concept to that, except instead of handlebars files, you're rendering uh, components. Uh, are you guys with me so far on all of this? I'm a little bit confused about this, the export default app. Is there another app that this is going to not app.js? Uh, no. Does so they change that to default, main router? The default is basically like when you export it, that's what um, it's going to default to. So when you say export default app, it just means like, oh, this one. So whenever I, whenever I import something and I import it, it's just going to look at this. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. It's like the default to import. I also don't like the spaces. Okay. I need this. I don't think I need that. Sorry, I'm also really anal about things. Okay. Oh, that's why you need that. Oh wait, hold on. Does it need that? Oh, I guess it does need that. A router can only have one child element, so everything has to be wrapped in a div. Okay. Hmm. Fine. Um, okay, so now let's get to one of these components. So um, I think the easier components you guys already understand. Is that correct? Would I, should I go into the more complicated 
components. Can you start with the easier one first? <laughs> All right. So let's go to the root component. So let's go to home. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the home component. So if I go to home component, um, how is this going to be rendered? What path do I have to go to for this home component to be rendered? The root, although it's covered up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yep. So it's going to render oh. the, uh, the, the path at root is going to render the home component. Correct. So if I go to the home component, go to components pages home. So component pages home, um, it's going to render this. So this is just a dumb component. Um, and the deep, it's when I import it, it's going to by default import um, just this component over here. And this is a fairly simplistic um, component. Uh, it's definitely a dumb component. Um, it's using JSX. Um, there's no uh, programming uh, going on there. It's just rendering whatever you give it. Uh, any questions about that? No, that's good. OK. So why don't we go to Hello, Joe. I don't know if that does anything more complicated. I think that was pretty simple too, but let me just double check. So, hello, div is in components. Hello, div. So, it makes sense. Yeah, this one's pretty simple too. So, all this is doing is again rendering JSX. Um, and you're just using uh, HTML-like syntax in order to render everything. Just remember that you guys have everything wrapped in a container, and uh, you should be okay. When do we wrap it in a container? When do we put return on? Is there a, a, a reason? Oh, this is, sorry, everything is implicitly returned. Um, if you oh, that's use, right. Uh, mm -hmm. Syntax over here. Um, so I'm just returning this single component, or this single container. Everything being returned is always in a single container. So the container is the div element. Right. OK, you guys with me so far? Yes. OK. Let's go to calculator. So next one is calculator. If I go to calculator JS, so I go to calculator. Uh, oh, yeah, I took out this the weird stuff in there. Uh, so let's get a calculator. Um, so what this is doing is this is starting to use subcomponents um, or other components. Um, so this is using math and calculator. Now what I want to do is I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to make it so it makes more sense. So I'm actually going to create a new folder. So folder. I'm going to put. And I'm going to move math with it because that's an associated component as well. So I have a good and a half math. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. And uh, calculator doesn't, like, uh, doesn't come from components calculator anymore. It comes from components calculator slash calculator because I put it inside of a directory called calculator. Uh, and this is going to call uh, math which exists um, parallel to it or adjacent to it. So that's fine. Uh, so that should still work. Yep. Um, so I, I don't like coupling things, but um, when working with React, it's weird. You have this concept of decoupling, and you are also coupling things. You want everything to be self-contained, but you also want it so it doesn't rely on any uh, outside components as well. So it's this weird paradox. But eventually, you start getting used to it. Um, over here, we have uh, the math component being used inside of our calculator component. So notice that this is our um, calculator component. Again, we're still using, so is this a smart component or a USC component? USC. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a USC component, right? So it's a very dumb component. Um, so we have our math component. And um, this is within our calculator component. So 
our math component contains a bunch of different properties and values, right? So uh, these properties and values um, are passed down as what inside of this component. Properties are passed down as props. Props, yes. Properties, props. Properties are props. So in order to access these properties inside of this math component, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the math component and we're going to say um, uh, props. So um, this is still a dumb component, right? But now it's taking in a parameter and this parameter can be used. So um, if I have this parameter props, I can just use it as props, right? And in this, I have a switch statement. So in this case, the props that are passed in, there's only uh, three main props, right? num1 operator and num2 so to access them i can say props.operator props.num1 and props.num2 i can use them however i wish because the comp uh, components are essentially just functions right and functions take in parameters and parameters can be used throughout your function to do whatever you want with and the arguments are the things that change uh to replace whatever the value of the parameters would be just like a function um, are you guys following me so far, or is it confusing? I'm following you, but when you don't explain it, I can't explain it to myself. <laughs> okay, so um, this props over here, um, so this props is being passed in as any of these properties that these are properties that get attached to this props object implicitly meaning that um, anytime you pass any properties in to another component you'll automatically have access to it through the props object therefore when i pass in a parameter called props this is going to say oh okay well i contain um, any properties that you've passed down to me so what are the properties that we've passed down into uh, the math component? Num1 operator num2. Exactly. So we have three different properties being passed in. So we can access these using the props object. And again, the properties are attached to this props object, right? So we say props.operator, props.num1, props.num2. And this is just algorithmic stuff that you can do in any function, right? Yes. Any function, you can just put in whatever you want. And you guys have done this. You guys have built calculators like, I don't know, a thousand times or something. Um, so you know how the, this logic works. Um, so the only difference really is that we're passing this props.num1, props.num2 as the values coming in here. And then finally, at the end, what we do is we say, okay, return the value. Now, this value was just something that we used a let variable, and the let variable allows us to say, okay, well, I can reassign the value. So if the operator is equal to an addition sign, um, the value is gonna be a sum. If it's a subtraction, then it's gonna be a difference. There's multiplication, then it's gonna be a product. There's division, right? Then it's gonna be a quotient. Um, and if, there's not, if it doesn't match any of these, then the value is gonna be not a number. So that's all we return back to it. So that's why what we see over here is Again, this is essentially a function call, and the function call results in an evaluation of an expression, right? So this is just us evaluating an expression. This is the function call, this component call. This is our component definition, right? And essentially components are just like fancy functions. So if this is our function call, we're not gonna display the function itself. We're gonna display the result of the function. The result of the function is always um, re returned back. Um, now, when I say the result, I mean the return value. Now, there's plenty of stuff that you can do to make it so um, it's going to display something, in, like, for instance, console log, document write, things like that. Um, but what I mean is the return value. So the return value over here is actually just some value inside of a span element. So what's going to display over here is not this math component, but the result of whatever this math component is trying to call or render. So over here, it's rendering this span value. 
which results in the following, 161, 25, 324. Much better, thank you. Absolutely, no problem. Anyone else having confusion or um, was that okay? No, we're good. I'm good. Excellent. Red team, good to go? All right, cool. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna move on to the next one, which is... Groceries, okay, so groceries. What I wanna do with groceries is first, I want to look at the groceries components. Where's the groceries component? It's gonna be, am I blind? Where's groceries? Groceries does not exist. Huh. I guess I never added the groceries component. Hold on, let me add that right now. That's weird. Uh, which one was this shit? Uh, Foundry factor, components, groceries. Uh, do, 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 style box. Let me look through them. Yeah, this is the one. Okay. So components map. So is this? Oh, it was list. Okay, so it's a list one. And the list is being passed the groceries. Got it. Okay. That's what happened. Okay. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll pass in list. Listo. Go to list, and this is using the groceries. So if I go back to groceries over here, and again, this is just representing like data being passed in through a database. So if I go to groceries, so if I go to list, I'm not really like doing this like this, like putting data just like that, but it's it's just an example. So um, you're not going to have data show up like this, and you shouldn't structure your data that way. Okay. So over here we have lists. So why don't I go to slash groceries? Nope, doesn't work. Let's see. What am I doing wrong? Is it because it's oh. in the same file you don't yeah. need the points? It is. It is in the same file that I used it. Um, so what I'm supposed to do is call it in another application because I'm routing directly to list and list doesn't have groceries being passed into it. So what I need to do is create Create a folder. Got groceries, I'm gonna put list in there. Um, and list, I'm gonna move from here to list. And then I'm gonna put, um, I don't know what I'm gonna call. Actually, I'm gonna call So this is gonna be groceries, I'm gonna call groceries. Mm. 
And then this is gonna be don't need this over here. Need this over here. And I'm just gonna call this is new props. This is going to be um, listo. List is going to be adjacent, so I'll import that. This from list, list is going to get past groceries equals groceries. What I'm doing here is I'm passing in the argument. Um, this is just going to return a single uh, list item. Uh, groceries, groceries from main router. It's going to be groceries. Oh, uh, I should just call this groceries. Groceries. And I'll just put groceries. There we go. Okay. So that works. Uh, so what I did here was like further modularization. Um, so I called this groceries uh, inside of this route um, such that when I go to the groceries path, it's going to render this file from this um, folder. And groceries, all it is is a list of different groceries in an array of objects. Do you guys see that um, groceries file is just an array of objects? Yes. Do you say it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So groceries is just a uh, array of objects. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass this array of objects into this list component. Um, so we're passing it as a what? What is groceries to this component in this case? Let's go back to SETs. Uh, property or attribute? Groceries in this case is both a property and the value, right? So the property name is groceries and the value is the array of objects that are being passed in uh, as the value uh, to this property that we've created called groceries. So I want you guys to start explaining it in these very technical terms now. Um, I know it sounds really complicated, but the more you explain it in these ways, the clearer it becomes when you start working with other developers instead of just saying, you know, I'm just passing stuff in. Um, cause if I say this, then the other developers on the team, I might be working remotely. Like right, right now I just work like purely remotely. So I really have to be good at communicating, um, what, what I'm trying to do or what problem I'm trying to solve. Uh, otherwise they have no idea what I'm talking about. So if I say, Oh, I'm passing in groceries as the array of objects. Um, and this groceries is a value to a property that I created inside of the list component. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So you're just passing the groceries and then you're just gonna use the groceries inside list. And I'm like, yeah, that's all I'm gonna do. So when I go to list, now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say, okay. So inside of here, what I wanna do is I wanna loop through my list of groceries. And in this loop, um, it's just going to uh, display all that information. So. Um, I, I go through each of these groceries. So I say props.groceries.map. And again, map is used in uh, React because uh, it's going to return whatever uh, uh, we want, right? So it's only going to return uh, something that matches this. But essentially, it's uh, also a shorthand form of us looping through something too. So we pass the props object in. And again, there's only um, one property that's attached to props this time. What is the only property that we passed in? It's item. Groceries. 
what is the only property being passed in as part of the props object into the list component? Groceries, yes, groceries. The groceries property. Remember, props object represents what? You guys are forgetting stuff that we just covered. <laughs> props is an object that is implicitly there. So it, it will get um, every property that you pass to it um, gets attached to the, uh, the props object inside of that component. So if I passed in, you know, meow equals, you know, two, sorry, two, then how many properties do I have attached to the props object instead of list? Two. Two. So what are the properties that are now part of the props object inside of uh, the list component? Groceries and meow. Groceries and meow, right? So if I wanted to access um, meow inside of here, what would I do? Props.meow. Exactly, props.meow. That's it. All right, so I'm going to show that over here too. So what I'll do is... Yeah, I'll do... Props.meow. Why isn't it showing? To props.meow to, is it showing? It might be showing. Oh, it's right there, yeah. Can you guys see it? It's hard to see, but it's right there. Hey, I'll make it something better. I am a gato. I'll put in. If I pass in a string, I don't think I have to actually do anything. I just do this. Gato. There we go. All right, so I can access any of these properties and they get attached to this props object. So I just access the properties to the props object. How are we doing so far on that? I'm now gonna go through the map. So the map is just a loop and what it does is it, when you use map, it's a higher order function and that means a, a function that takes in another function. So when we map, each of these elements has a uh, function um, passed to it. So, uh, or sorry, the, the item is uh, passed to that function. So if I have this item, what it means is it represents any element um, any one element that it's iterating through inside of this groceries array. So if I say item, I, I can call it whatever I want. It would essentially be starting off with the first element inside of the groceries array. So we know that the groceries array, um, each element is of what data type? An object. Yeah. So if I say the first item uh, and I say item dot name, um, and it's the first item, what is the value of item.name gonna be? Milk. milk, 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 yeah. Someone was like echoing, so just multiple times milk. Uh, excellent, yep, that's it. So um, if I say item.id, um, this actually references every time you create a new element inside of a list, uh, for memory purposes, React um, wants a unique identifier. So luckily for us, each grocery item has a unique identifier using the ID, which is an identifier. And then from there, um, you get item.name. Now, this isn't mandatory, but it will give you a giant warning if you don't do it. Um, I highly recommend doing it because it will make your React run much, much faster. All right. A quick question on that is, uh, is it, does it have to be a property of a key? And uh, does it have to, and it has to be unique, right? Yes, it does have to be inside of key. Key is a specific um, property uh, for React.
All right, and then from there, we just display the name of each one. And then we could just do something like this. We can say, And, um, make this a little bit fancier, right? That <laughs> purchase cheese. Oh, I left this as name. <laughs> Hold on. Purchase. Let's return true or false. Oh, it's just going to return the Boolean value. So what I'll do is turn this into a ternary. And I'll return true. Yeah, oh, actually, let's do yes. Otherwise, no. And that should work. There we go, yeah. So some cool little stuff that you can do uh, with React. So basically, I just said, take this Boolean value that is also in there because it was being wasted. So I was like, all right, why don't we do some cool stuff with it? So if it's purchased, then I can just add it to some JSX, and I can put in a paragraph tag, and I can run a ternary operator through it. Is the item purchased true or false? So each of these has a true or false statement that um, these are Boolean values, so I can return whatever I want based on that. If it's true, I can return, make that money. Otherwise I can return no. Uh, with, with this, can you also do like, can you only list the items that say uh, the false on purchased? Yeah. And how would that look like? You would just put that under a ternary. So you just say like, if purchased, doing this wrong. Oh, this whole thing is under, never mind, I'm being stupid. Uh, Item.name, otherwise, I think I need this one. I'll just, I'll just do something stupid for now. Mm, actually, I should wrap the whole thing. Yeah, it would be better if I did, uh, damn it, LeVon. It made you work. You could have also uh, added the exclamation point in front of item.name there. And then if that returned not true, then in your first ternary, ternary statement, you would have done no or else an empty string, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like having the ternary up top because, well, you can just do like, yeah, item.purchase um, over here, like, like my little thing. So actually, that would probably make more sense. That would be probably the easiest. Yeah. Let's see. Item purchased. True. Actually, just like this would be good, right? Oh, no. I can't do that. I have to do. Let's see. I forgot. Does that allow me to do conditional um, outside of ternary? So. Um, I don't know. You can do a nested ternary inside of the ternary. Yeah, but that's ugly. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's just do, okay, let's just do item.purchase. Um, 
yeah, we'll just do this. So item dot purchase. Um, it's gonna be this. God damn it! I'm so bad at remembering syntax. Um, yeah, I think I can just do that. And then I can do otherwise, no purchase. <laughs> yeah, so that works. Uh, with the map method, are you able to like ex like only get what you need, or does it have to go through each single one? Uh, I think you can have yeah, you can pass an iterator through it, but essentially it just goes through each element. That you could probably use the reduce function if you wanted to do something like that. Probably be easier. Yeah. <laughs> With map, it's gonna go through every single one. With reduced, it's gonna give you an accumulator, and then you can accumulate based on like what you want. The key or, or the item, yeah. yeah. There's also like a filter if you want just certain things too. Um, but yeah, reduced would probably be the best case in this case. Okay, so let's go back to basic version of this. Jesus. Oh, uh, wait. Yeah, that's fine. Just like that. <coughs> and then item dot purchase. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, whatever. I'm just going to take out. You guys already saw it. Okay, so let's go to form. Do I have form in here? Yeah, let's go to form. So um, this is our first component that's going to be a higher level component or a stateful component. Um, so the stateful component um, is smart because um, it keeps track of things that happen. So if I'm trying to keep track of things that happen, um, React is really good about that. Um, you guys are probably going to go, if you guys for, go further into like state management and stuff like that, you're probably going to look at some libraries like Redux and stuff like that. But for right now, like, um, we can just keep track of our uh, state inside of our topmost level component that is relevant. So in this case, this is our uh, component that we start off with. So this extends the component uh, from React. Um, so basically that just means we have access to a whole bunch more stuff uh, than we normally would. Um, so we start accessing state, we start using functions um, a lot more. Um, we're I mean, like the biggest change is essentially we're maintaining state, right? Um, and we're gonna start using, again, like we already went over this, but um, we're gonna be using this unidirectional workflow um, where we have our functions um, or methods in this case uh, that are gonna be passed down to the subcomponents and uh, or the child components and the child components are gonna be uh, updating the state in the uh, top level component um, by having access to the component passed down to it. So basically the parent is telling the child, hey, you now have access privilege to update this, but only because I gave it to you. Um, and you can start off with state. Uh, state is just an object. Um, the object is tied to the class. So in this case, the class is form. So if you want to access uh, the state, all you have to do is uh, use this.state. Um, make sure you understand that you do have to keep track of um, 
lexical scope. So you have to keep track of this. Uh, so in this case, if we have this dot set state, um, this is being uh, maintained because we are using uh, arrow functions. So this is being passed down into the function. So if I say this dot set state, this is not referring to some random global object. It's referring back to form. Um, so we are using these custom functions to actually maintain our application. I think this is where the most confusion comes in um, because we update things in a semi roundabout way. So what I'm doing over here is I'm saying, okay, I have this form and I have these input elements. So if I go to this, where is it? Uh, form. If I go to slash form, if I go here, um, I have these two input elements over here. And these are taking in uh, a whole bunch of properties. Um, and so these properties um, are generally found as attributes inside of uh, regular HTML. But you have like uh, a little bit of a difference. So one is this on change. Um, so this on change happens whenever it's an event listener that's basically like, hey, anytime something changes in this, uh, what I want you to do is execute the following function. So we defined a function for that. Um, and the function's name is this, is, sorry, it's called handle input change. So if we go to handle input change, this handle input change is a method that's tied to the form object. So therefore we just call it using this dot handle input change. Um, the event object is implicitly going to get passed to it if we're using um, on change. So the event dot target is going to represent the uh, element that um, the event came from. Um, so in this case, that would be the input element. So I can access the different properties of that element using uh, object deconstruction. Uh, otherwise, it takes a couple of lines to write it out. So object deconstruction just makes it easier. So right now, all I'm doing is storing event.target.name and event.target.value inside of name and value, right? Are you guys with me so far or lost? Is anyone here? Yeah, yeah. I'm following along. You're good. Jane, Levon, are you guys okay? Uh, yes, kind of. So did you say that when something changes, at first it's tied to that event that target that value, and then it becomes? I didn't, I didn't go over that yet. So I didn't let's say like event.target.value. I just said like, if I do on change, this is going to execute the function that you pass it. And then what I said is the event.target is the element, meaning the input element, whatever event uh, is passed in, that element that you're targeting. So what I'm doing is object deconstruction for now, meaning that I'm accessing the name and the value that came out of there. And I'm storing them inside of a variable called name and a variable called value. So name in this case, name is going to contain what? If I if I change anything in this one, username. Yes, yeah, exactly, username. And value is going to be whatever value I put in there, actually. So the value is going to be whatever value I put in. Oh, sorry, I have to take this one second.
Sorry, everyone, just give me a minute. Um, I am moving right now also. So um, in the meantime, I want you guys to take a look at this file and see if you guys can understand the logic flow through it. And then I'll be right back. Leave it charged in case it tries to close or anything. Hello. 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 Uh, I don't know that. What that? Mm, yeah, the, you don't have enough space? Uh, what is that? that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be small enough. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, one second. I'm going to put it down. My husband is. Oh, okay. Actually, um, so while I'm doing this, I want to see if you guys can maybe explain to each other what's happening here, taking turns. So, Michael, I know you've been working in this field already, so maybe let's give Lavon and Jane a chance, and maybe, Michael, you can see if you can uh, help them out. Uh, so get it done. Okay. Hi, Michael. I'm Jane. Um, I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, so in the render area on change, it goes to this dot handle input change. So we go to the handle input change function and it looks at his props. Is, is event a props? Yeah, yeah. My other house has a mattress. Uh, Would I consider that a, a? I know handle input change is a, a function, and so event. Event would be an argument that's passed in to that function. Okay. Yeah. And then um, the. The object is deconstructed with the const with name and value, and so it becomes um, event.target.name and event.target.value. Did I get that right so far? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to go I'm going through this as well. Uh, I don't really work with React, so. Oh. <laughs> But then I get stuck here at this dot set state. Um, Levon, do you remember what? Uh, so. Yeah, so let me try quick. So basically when it goes, so first of all, the on change is an event, right? So we click, let's say letter A and the state changed. So now it calls this function and then the letter A became, becomes a value of the event.target. Event.target.value, I think, becomes an A. And then we're saying that this dot state function says that wherever the name was, uh, so in this case, the username, Come that value, so it will become an A. Okay, is what I'm understanding. So, is name itself a property rather than anything you typed in? 
So I think in this case, if you had like, um, if you had like username equals username down at the render part. Yes. You would have to have this dot state would be probably username equals the value and then you'd have to repeat yourself on the password as well. And I think because it's in the square brackets, you can use that name for both the username and the password. But that's kind of, uh, I wish it was like kind of broken down and then compiled or modulized or whatever it's called. Uh, Cause it is very confusing. And uh, I'm just like, I'm thinking that I'm just gonna, you know, save this code and wherever I need the input, I'm just gonna, you know, just copy this and try not <laughs> about it <laughs> but yeah, yeah I'm having a really hard time understanding it too I guess we'll wait for Omar and maybe he'll clarify Uh, okay. Sorry about that, guys. I'm still going at it. Um, what I can do is, like, if you guys want to continue doing this on your own, um, you guys can have some discussions about the different uh, things that are on here. So I just have to do a bunch of things today. Um, I didn't realize, like, how busy I was. Um, and then I have to actually have a social life, which is weird, I know. Um, so I don't know. It's up to you guys. Do you guys want to stay on here and just discuss the different modules with each other? Uh, I'm probably going to head out. Okay. Yeah. I think but. we're just stuck on this one bit just where you, where you left. So maybe we can continue it later. Uh, thing is, I don't know when I'm gonna get time. Yeah, yeah. I meant I meant next Sunday, but um. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can definitely do that next Sunday. I just wouldn't have time like like this week or anything. But, um, okay, so let's just continue this next Sunday then. Okay. All right. All right. Good luck, everyone. I'll catch you guys next time. Cool. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. See you guys.